Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kenny Vaughn. He's going to talk about being around Bob Dylan. The first time I was around him was um, when G.E. Smith and Kenny Aronson were in the band. But I was playing with the Sweethearts of the Rodeo, and um, we were playing. We were in Florida opening for him for a, a string of dates. I was in the green room tuning up my guitar. And there was a lot of people in there, but it was kind of a big green room at one of the shows in Florida. And uh, I heard this voice right behind me say, oh, it's good to see you, man. And I heard, oh, it's good to see you too, you know? And I turned around and it's Roger McGuinn and Bob Dylan talking to each other. And I was like, I'm, I have my back to them. I'm sitting down and they're standing like maybe five feet away from me, facing me, talking, you know? And I'm like, wow. Roger McGuinn and Bob Dylan, you know. <laughs> I was like, how you doing, man? You know. <laughs> you know. You live down here, don't you? Yeah, we live we live here, yeah. That that was the first time and then uh I was with Lucinda and we did a bunch of dates with uh he was touring with Van Morrison and the deal was he was supposed to like one night Dylan was supposed to close the show and the next night Van would Closed the show. They were swapping, you know, and and Georgie Fame was playing in Van's band, which was the most exciting thing for me. The whole tour, you know, I got to meet Georgie Fame, you know, and, and he was playing his ass off playing the Hammond organ, you know. I was like, I can't, couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know. It was, it's Georgie fucking Fame, you know. <laughs> That's awesome, you know. And and then Dylan was doing this thing where if he was supposed to close the show. In the afternoon, he'd say, you know, I think you should close the show tonight <laughs> to the van. <laughs> and, if, and if Van was supposed to close the show, Dylan was like, you know, I think I should close the show tonight, you know. I, th I think it, that was a pretty contentious situation. I've heard the same thing about when Merle Haggard toured with him. I think that it was kind of like that they didn't really bond uh, from either side. You know, like they were probably standoffish and shy around each other. But I, I, I heard a story that they were Bob was walking through back the hall backstage, and Merle was coming the other way with their, you know, probably a couple people on each side. You know, and um, it, as Bob passed Merle, he said, "Hey, Merle, why don't you? I want you to teach me how to hop a freight train sometime." <laughs> You know, shit like that. He's always fucking with people, you know. He's funny. And then the last time I saw him was uh, we were at Capitol um, in the A room, and he was in the B room in Hollywood, and he came, he's friends with Marty. And um, we were just, we were about ready to go call it a day. We'd been working all day. It was about you know, seven o'clock in the evening or something like that. We we're gonna go get a bite to eat, you know. Or, uh, door opens and in walks Bob. And Marty says, Bob, you know, and they give each other a hug. And hey, man, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, man. And he looks at us, he says, oh, I see you have your whole band here. And he goes around, hey, I'm Bob, I'm Bob, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'd met him before, but you know, it's like, he didn't know, he doesn't know who I am. but. Uh, and he, he was really nice that day, affable, happy. Looked like some, he looked like a million bucks, man. He's in great shape, you know. He's a boxer, and um, I don't think he has any bad habits, you know. He he trains a lot. He, he stays in shape, and boxes. You don't hear a lot of stories about Bob walking around like, "Hey, how you doing?" To, you know, yeah, shaking hands with the band. That's pretty. Yeah, well, there wasn't anybody in there but us. You know, it was just the, the four of us and then Bob. It was just, you know, five people in the room and, you know, kind of a neutral zone. And nobody was doing anything. So, you know, it was... Like, I don't believe in, like, favorites or best, but if I enforce Bob would be my all-time favorite. Well, who else is going to talk about, you know? I mean, come on. I'll never forget, you know... I had heard "Blowing in the Wind" and um, and uh, "Hard Rain's Gonna Fall," 
that kind of stuff. And my uh, best friend's older sister had those first couple albums, you know. But when Subterranean Homesick Blues came on the radio, my head exploded, you know. It was a hit on AM radio. It was in the top 10, you know. Subterranean Homesick Blues is played alongside, you know, Frank Sinatra and the Beatles and Dave Clark Five, and then there's Bob Dylan's Subterranean Homesick Blues, and it's like, what is this? You know, well, this guy is great, you know, and then he follows it up, you know, less than a year later with Like a Rolling Stone, you know, and I'm just like, whoa, you know, so I had, you know, Highway 61 and, and Bringing It On Home, Bringing It All Back Home, and uh, Blonde on Blonde when they, you know, the day they came out, you know, because I was like, wow, I was a big fan, and uh, I just thought, man, this guy's on a different level than everybody else, and he changed a lot of things, you know, I think that even the Beatles say, yeah, our, our lyrics probably changed very quickly after we heard Bob. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to hear more of Kenny Vaughn telling stories, click this playlist and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.